Time is the most measured quantity in the world. We use it to plan our lives, find our way, and make our fortunes. Because so much depends on accurate timekeeping, the National Institute of Standards and Technology, or NIST, is constantly working to build better clocks. NIST's new atomic time standard, the F2 fountain clock, is the most accurate clock of its kind in the world. If NIST F2 ran continuously for 300 million years, it would not stray from perfect time by one second. Some very real sense, the job of NIST is to recognize and, and bring forward the best standards you can have for certainly the basic quantities of length and mass and time and things like that. And presumably you end up pushing as hard as you can to build the best standard you can. And when you can do something better than the Earth gives you naturally in its rotation, well, you, you go ahead and you start down that road. And then people keep making it better. And when you make it better, somebody starts having a use for it. And so you have to make a better one. And this process continues to this day. The new clock is three times more accurate than the previous NIST standard, NIST F1. Several improvements were made in NIST F2, the most important being to nearly eliminate small errors caused by background radiation. First, lasers slow and cool the atoms to just a fraction of a millionth of a degree above absolute zero. A laser then lofts the ultra-cold atoms into a tube inside a liquid nitrogen-cooled chamber. The cold chamber reduces errors caused by thermal radiation, which slightly alters the ticking rate of the atoms. Within the clock, the cesium atoms make two passes through a microwave chamber. If the frequency of the microwaves matches the atoms' ticking rate perfectly, their outermost electrons flip over and enter an excited state. When a laser beam hits the atoms, only those in the excited state respond by absorbing and re-emitting the light. Scientists know they have found the right microwave frequency when they see the atoms re-emit the most light. That frequency is defined. It's the only defined frequency we have, okay? So all other frequencies you measure with respect to that frequency, and that frequency is, as I said, it's 9 billion times a second. Well, if I count 9,192,631,770 cycles of the radiation that makes the electron flip over, then that's one second. And now I count another 9 billion, I've got another second, and so on. And so you simply keep counting. NIST scientists use that second to recalibrate their commercial atomic clocks, which run more reliably, but aren't nearly as accurate as a cesium fountain. We need ultra-accurate time for a host of applications, including the global positioning system, telecommunications, and the internet. But do we really need time accurate to within one three hundred millionth of a second per year? Um, so the, the short answer is, is there's probably no relevance to the best clock we can build today in everybody's life tomorrow. But that clock is going to be the progenitor for something that really is important 10 years from now, I would predict. Um, the fact of the matter is the commercial atomic clocks you go buy today, and look, there are companies in business selling these things, and if there wasn't a market, there wouldn't be. The clocks they sell are as good as the clocks we could possibly build in the laboratory 20 years ago and they're being used all over the place. And so we, we have to stay out in front of that. If for no other reason, then we have to be able to calibrate them. So we have to be that much better than they are in order to measure them.